China is buying oil from Iran. The UN weakens against the US dollar. And China's space agency wants to explore Uranus. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of. And you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. So next week marks a very important anniversary. No, it's not the week Xi Jinping took power. I'm talking about the day a dashing young man in a slightly oversized suit made a terrible career choice to go against the world's most powerful authoritarian regime. And look what that's gotten me. A beard and a slightly better fitting suit. But since my first video in October 2012, I've traveled the world to expose the Chinese Communist Party's influence. From visiting disputed islands in the South China Sea, to getting tear gassed in Hong Kong, to I don't even know what's happening here. The point is, Thank you for being a loyal viewer. Unless this is your first episode of China Uncensored. Then thank you in advance. To celebrate, I'll be hosting a 10-year anniversary live stream with Matt and Shelley. It starts next Wednesday, October 5th at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. I hope to see you there. Speaking of things that have gone on for 10 years, Chinese leader Xi Jinping. He's back. There were rumors that he had been purged, which, as I said in my recent episode, were not true. Xi Jinping had just returned from Uzbekistan. His recent absence was consistent with China's strict COVID protocols, which mandate all international arrivals undergo seven days of hotel quarantine, followed by three days of home isolation. Now, we don't know whether Xi was in quarantine, but if he was, this marks the first time in decades that a Chinese leader has followed his own rules. Iran may be a nation shunned by the Western world, but it does have one staunch ally, China. While the atheist Chinese Communist Party may have some ideological differences with Iran's Muslim regime, that hasn't stopped them from working together where it counts. Money. And oppression. As you probably know, there have been major protests in Iran since mid-September. They came after Iran's morality police arrested a 22-year-old woman for not properly wearing her hijab, the Muslim headscarf. And then she turned up dead. Those protests might have toppled a weaker government. And Western sanctions that ban trade with Iran are meant to hurt that authoritarian regime. But fortunately, the Iranian regime is strong, thanks largely to the money it gets from China. You might even call China the savior of Tehran for propping it up with major oil purchases. Since January 2021, Iran has sold China $38 billion worth of oil. This really is win-win. China gets oil at a discount, and Iran gets to keep killing protesters. Speaking of authoritarian Islamic regimes who want to work with China, the Taliban. Afghanistan has an estimated $1 trillion worth of mineral deposits. Everybody wants them. And after the U.S. military's exit last year, China started pursuing mining deals that would give them access to Afghanistan's sweet, sweet copper, gold, and rare earth minerals, which seemed like a good idea at the time. China even made a big push to have warm relations, like by inviting the Taliban over for dinner. But so far, the promises of Chinese investment haven't panned out. Why? Ideological differences. The Taliban routinely arrests and kills its own citizens for not adhering to extreme Islamic ideology. That's okay with the CCP. What's not okay is that the Taliban hasn't done enough to help the Chinese Communist Party crack down on the Muslim Uyghur people in China's own Xinjiang region. That's right. The Communist Party refuses to invest in Afghanistan because it feels the Taliban just aren't cracking down hard enough. And after the break, China's currency is weaker than it's been in a decade. Welcome back. 
This week marks the eighth anniversary of the beginning of the Hong Kong Umbrella Movement. That was a protest that started back in 2014. Hong Kongers were protesting for the right to directly elect their leader, which the Chinese Communist Party had promised to let them do, but then broke their promise. Never trust the Communist Party. It was called the Umbrella Movement after protesters used umbrellas to defend themselves against police pepper spray and tear gas. The protest ended up lasting almost 80 days, with people occupying parts of central Hong Kong. I went there to cover those protests and got a sense of how much Hong Kongers were willing to protect their home. Now, eight years later, the Communist Party is crushing Hong Kong. But some Hong Kongers are still trying to commemorate the Umbrella Movement, despite the danger. A handful of people showed up outside the government headquarters on Wednesday. And some placed two yellow umbrellas nearby. And then the police came to question people, including asking a woman why she had an umbrella when it wasn't raining. Thank goodness the Hong Kong police were there to protect her from that dangerous umbrella. China's currency, the yuan, has fallen to its weakest point against the U.S. dollar in more than a decade. China is facing a slew of economic challenges, including food price inflation, a banking crisis, and the slow motion bursting of its real estate bubble. The weak yuan is a concern for Chinese lenders, and so its central bank has a solution. They're not going to fix any underlying problems, no. <laughs> They're going to force financial institutions to keep more currency in reserve, which will make it costlier for them and their clients to sell yuan and buy dollars. Which is a great idea. It'd be like if there was a food shortage and the government solved it by not letting anyone to a grocery store unless they do 100 push-ups first. Well, more food for the strong people. Problem solved. But China's still looking for ways to prop up its economy. And one company is optimistic. Battery maker CATL. It's expanding, with plans to build a giant battery facility in China's Luoyang city. The reason this is a big deal is that CATL has grown rapidly in the last few years, thanks to foreign companies buying its batteries, which were, let's just say, not entirely designed with Chinese homegrown innovation. Doesn't matter, CATL now controls nearly 35% of the global EV battery market. It supplies electric vehicle batteries to car companies from Volkswagen to Tesla. And its expansion means that if you want to join the green energy revolution, you're more and more likely to have to rely on help from China. Speaking of markets, China wants to dominate the microchip market. Big Chinese investors are pumping money into homegrown chip makers to outcompete American companies like Nvidia. They're concerned about the new US regulations that limit the sale of microchips to China, so they're doubling down on making their own versions for the China market. This is a big deal because every modern device these days requires microchips, from iPhones to cruise missiles. This coming Monday, check out our podcast, China Unscripted. We'll be talking with Chris Miller, author of the new book, Chip War, about China's plans to dominate the chip market and what it means for the rest of the world. Yes, we also have a weekly podcast. It's on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and more. I'll put a link in the description below. And finally, in space news, China is seeking new partners for lunar and deep space exploration. NASA has forbidden China's space agency to participate in U.S. or international missions over concerns that, you know, China is constantly stealing U.S. technology. But China's response has been, fine, we'll make our own space program. And they did. It's called the China National Space Administration, CNSA. It was founded in 1993, and in less than three decades, it's found a way to rip off enough U.S. technology to be competitive. For years, CNSA's biggest foreign partner has been Russia. But that's getting a little tricky lately because of the whole Ukraine invasion thing. So CNSA is inviting other countries to join. China's Chang'e 6 lunar mission already includes some participation from Sweden, Italy, France, and Pakistan. It's looking for more partners for its upcoming Chang'e 7 Lunar South Pole Landing and Orbiting mission. Personally, I wouldn't invest, though. I have a feeling that mission is going to go south. But China is not just shooting for the moon. It also has plans to outclass NASA in deep space. In around 2030, it'll launch the Tianwen-4 mission, which will include a solar-powered Jupiter orbiter 
in a smaller spacecraft that'll make a flyby of Uranus. Now that's deep space. Watch out. And this episode has been sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. Your name, your email, your home address, your social security number, your employment history, all sorts of things. And what are they doing with your data? They're buying it, selling it, and trading it to other companies. Some of them are using your data to sell you products. Others use it to adjust your credit score or to help the government monitor you. And if any of these companies get hacked, you could be in big trouble. Like in 2013, hackers got into Yahoo and exposed personal information on 3 billion users. You never know when this kind of data breach is going to happen, and when it does, you don't want your personal information to be there. When I signed up for Incogni, I discovered there were 76 data brokers that potentially had my private information. I'd never heard of most of these companies, but they had definitely heard of me. Incogni forces these companies to delete your data. There are laws that allow you to do this, but if you want to do it yourself, you'd have to figure out the applicable laws, write letters in a specific legal way, and follow up to make sure your instructions are followed. Incogni handles this for you. Just a few months after signing up, Incogni had already gotten my details removed from 20 of these data brokers, with 34 more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. So check out Incogni using the link below, or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. The first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.